don't forget to click that subscribe and bell icon to receive a notification each time I upload a new video. So I recently picked up this inexpensive 8x8 boxed photo frame from one of our um, one of our supermarket chains. And it was fairly sort of inexpensive. Um, I've taken out the glass and the reason I like these particular photo frames is because they're deep. Um, they've got a real nice kind of deep, so you can do a real nice kind of shadow box um, and build up out of the frame and actually have it spilling out over the frame if you want to. So I've taken all the bits of paper out and I've taken the actual glass from the inside of the frame out and it is actually glass, not plexiglass, which is a miracle in itself these days. Um, and all I've done is I've just clipped it back in again, pushed the, uh, the clips down just to hold it in position like so. And then I've taken a pen and I've just run the pen around the inside of the frame making a mark on that um, back panel. So now that I've drawn the line, he says, and take that off, you can see now that I've drawn a border, a frame, all the way around and that is my no-go area. So as long as I stick within that, when I'm sticking down on my elements for my mixed media frame, then I know it's still gonna sit inside the frame perfectly. What I also could do is I could actually um, build the frame, build the pieces inside the frame, which is an option that I haven't yet dismissed. <laughs> so I've already gone through and I've got all the bits and pieces of my resin, my cast resin pieces that I want to use um, for this frame. There will be a little bit, just a little bit of an industrial feel to it, but only with the inclusion of some of these little mini cogs. Um, I'm not going massive and I'm not going to put huge cogs in there apart from as packing pieces, which is why you can see that one there. That's only going to get used as a packing piece underneath something else. You're going to barely see it when it's when it's finished and decorated. So I've already worked out my composition um, and I'll just put a photo on the screen now so you can see how I've worked it out. So I, I actually put all the pieces down inside the frame um, just to see where everything was going to fit and then I added in bits and pieces just to fill in the gaps so that I knew relatively where I needed to go. And then I've kept everything um, that I put into the frame, all the bits that I didn't use are back in there. I know, that's for another project. Um, but all the ones that I didn't use I've put back in a pot to one side and I've kept everything that I have or want to include in this tub here so that I know everything is there on tap and I don't have to go rooting for it. So one of the other things that I want to do is um, I want to also create um, like a frame, not a frame, I want to create a line so I know where the middle of the frame is. When I start sticking things down I want to make sure that I'm getting things equal and balanced. So I need some kind of measuring stick, preferably a plastic or metal one. And of course they all seem to have disappeared, he says running across to the other side of the room. I'm bearing in mind this is supposed to be an 8 inch one. Yeah, it's 8 inch to the outside of the frame, so the inside isn't actually 8 inch. So if I measure, I could do one of them Tim Holtzy ones, couldn't I, with the, with the centre point in the middle. Have I got one to hand? Yes, there you go. So this is when Tim's idea sometimes come to fruition. So if we put that into the middle there, so the zero point, we've got three, one, two, three, three, one, two, three. So it's just a little out, just a tad. So that bit in the middle there is just a little bit out. And if I do the same thing down here, that's pretty much, I would say, middle point there. That does look off doesn't it? 
doesn't look right at all. One, two, three and a half. One, two, three. Mm, yeah, I see it needed to be just a little bit, just a tad. That's more like it. So if I get my straight edge there now, that's pretty much my centre point for working. So when I add my first piece, which um, is going to be something like this, I know that as long as I get that on the top line, on that line there, I know that I've got it straight, which will be a miracle for me. Um, so the other thing that I want to do, or need to do, is just get, um, find my pokey tool, because there's some of these pieces that just need cleaning and tidying up a little bit. They were cast, um, and I've not actually gone around and cleaned all the bits off where I've kind of like overspilled and I've not sanded everything down which I need to do before I do anything else. So that's going to be my next job which is to go around and clean and sand there we go all the bits that I don't want see I do need my pokey tail after all or a pair of tweezers I'll do. I just need to poke it out there a little bit. There we go. So I'll go off and clean all these bits up, give them a little bit of a sand when necessary if any of it's come off. Just a tad of the edges up, just like there. And then I'll be right back, ready start laying it out and gluing it down. Okay so I've sanded down all of my bits and pieces so they're all done and ready to go. First thing I want to do is to add a little bit of stenciling in the background with some texture paste. So this is some um, True Grit so it's a fine texture paste from Indigo Blue, part of their Junk and Disorderly range. So this has been, or was, out of stock for quite some time. Um, and then as soon as they got it back in again, I jumped on it because it's a very light paste, but it dries super quick, which is absolutely perfect. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put a dollop which is a proper word. Just like so. Into the background. And you can still see the line that's there. So, and I don't mind if there's a little bit of overlap so kind of just get it lined up a little bit down there, which is exactly what the stencil was designed to do. I'm going to try and stay within that line. But if it goes over a little bit, eh, no biggie. It's no problem. And maybe a little bit over here. do. So I shall just scrape that back in. I'll go and wash my stencil because it will need doing straight away because if you let this stuff dry on there stencil's ruined um, but if you get to it while it's still wet you're fine. So we'll leave that to dry and then I will be back. The texture paste has now had about half an hour to dry. I did help it along a little bit with the heat gun but I've pretty much left it to do its own thing in its own time rather than try and hurry it along. Um, so what I want to do now is just add a coat of black gesso. So I've got my 
uh, indigo blue black gesso and I'm just gonna I've given it a good shake just to make sure it's all nicely mixed and then I'm just going to go over all of that texture and I'm just going to go up to the outside borderline but what I also want to make sure I do is not lose track or not lose sight of that line that goes all the way down the middle I should have really measured it once I painted it but hey ho <laughs> I'm only human. I suppose I can always measure it again later, can't I? Get a piece of kitchen towel and just slide it underneath the stand. Okay, so a couple of minutes and that gesso is pretty much dry. Now you can't really see, I don't think you, the texture on that now. It's disappeared into the background, which is fine. But I can still see my lines that I did top to bottom, so I'm happy about that. So I don't need to worry too much about, um, about making sure I've got everything central. Okay, so sticking things down. I'm going to do this the old-fashioned way. So I'm going to use some golden heavy gel, extra heavy gel. And a little spatula, like so. So what I need to do is I need to go back to my picture that I took with all my bits on which is just there, so I can see where, oh, typical, so I can see where everything went, or pretty much so, so I can start building up my bits. All right, so that was the first piece. So we'll take a little bit of the gel medium. I'm not going to go really mad with this stuff. Because I don't want um, I don't want a lot of squeeze out. Looks like there's a lump in that. Okay, so a little bit on the back. And then I've got my centre mark and my line, which I can just about still see. And that's what I mean about squeeze out. And you see where when I push down the glue kind of squeezed out from underneath. So what I normally do with that is get a brush and then you can just brush the excess away. There we go. So I just want to make sure I have still got yeah Pretty much still there. 
and then the outer line where the pen was so I'm still within the frame there that's good and then still within the frame about there So this is where sometimes it's worthwhile putting your canvas back into the frame so you can see where everything's going. Right, what did I do with that little brush then? Oh, here we go. There, right in front of me. Terrible. Okay, so some of the bigger pieces then. So we've got two of the bigger pieces which are going to sit, I think actually I am going to put it back in the frame, I think it's going to be easier if I put it back in the frame, that way I don't have to keep referring back to those lines. There we go, so I'll just push it down, that's it. I'm not too bothered about the fact you can see some of the paint underneath because it is going to slide around so I'll keep it in the frame until I've got the pieces where I want them alright so not quite like that. Uh, this piece like so, that piece like that. So that is going to go like that, just like that. Okay, so first piece then, because it's quite a big piece. Where's that hair come from? That's not my colour. A lot of people that would be a right turn off. Okay. I've got a fly in the room now, I can hear him buzzing around. Okay, so that's the first piece. So that can go, twist it so it goes into the corner. Just push that down a little bit. And do the same again at this side. So this is going to take a while and I probably will end up talking to myself quite considerably. So what I'll do, because literally watching paint dry here, is I'll put this on fast forward for you so you're not bored to tears and then I'll join you when I've got most of the pieces stuck back down.
Uh, I think I've come to the conclusion that this golden heavy gel is actually going off. Um, I don't think by a long chalk that it's supposed to be as fibrous as it feels. So I'm going to switch. Okay, I've switched to Indigo Blue Super Thick Slappy Tongue. So this is exactly the same stuff, it's just that this one is much more creamier than the other. So I theoretically um, could probably, yeah that'll do, I could actually probably br brush um, this gel medium onto the back. Yeah, look at that. This is definitely what the other one should have been like. Butter the back up. Okay. Probably will ruin that um, that brush in the long run, but don't remind really that. Okay, so I need to get my head in shot again. So just bear with me a sec. Okay, that's the one. I've just moved it now, look. Okay, so now I've got those in place, I can carry on adding in the other bits. So I've got another little frame here. That's just gonna create a little bit of a packing piece. Now I can get the final bigger piece on. Make sure I get plenty on the back. I'm also just going to put just a tad on the top. Flame again, we get plenty on the back. So that it seeps into the detail and holds itself in position. Yeah. That's what we want. Just like that. Okay, so back to the smaller dudes.
Okay, so I think that is everything. The box is empty. So now I'm going to leave that for a good couple of hours to dry au naturel before I even think about adding a first coat of primer. So I hope you'll join me again tomorrow for part two where I add all the colour and all the sparkle. I'd like to say a huge thank you to all of my angels because without you these videos would not be possible. And don't forget you can access your exclusive angel only content over on my website. There's a link in the description area below. Thank you.